Welcome to First Canada's FTC SIM Tutorials. This series is about how to use FTC SIM, a first tech challenge robot simulator created by First Canada. So this um, particular video is intended for teachers or mentors who have a bunch of kids that they want to use this either in a classroom or as part of a first tech challenge team. So there's a, a, a way to create an account where the students don't have to create their own accounts and the teacher and the mentor can do that for them. <clears throat> so up here at the top left in the hamburger menu, uh, I haven't gone into it now. I can see it tells me I need to log in. So I'm, I'm over here at ftcsim.org slash ftcsim slash and <clears throat> I can go in and I can log in. And when I get to this point, if I don't have an account, I can sign up for, as an individual. If I do have an account, I can sign up as uh, I can start another account. I could sign up as a teacher. So I'm going to go to the one I have signed up. That's this one here. And I put in my password and I'm going to log in. So if you haven't created an account, you can sign up as a teacher. You have to put some information in and then away you go. And the bonus, the benefit of this is that the students do not have to input any personal identifiable information. And they can still take advantage of first tech challenge ftc simulator which is free so if you need to do some coding in class this is a great way to do it and there are other videos that explain how to use sensors and motors and and so forth so <clears throat> once again i'm going to go up here and now i will see as an individual i don't see my school but as a uh, signing up as a teacher i do and when i go to my school it allows me to look at the classrooms that i've created so <clears throat> I've created a few because I've already done this. So essentially, once you get to this point, you can add in a class. I'm going to call it, uh, um, I'll just call it Mr. K's, uh, I'll better spell it right, K's grade seven. You can call it whatever you want so I can add the class in and you can see it puts it down here. At this point, it's telling me I have no teach, no students. So I'm going to go to view and then I'm going to click on where it says add a student. Now, one of the things I, I'm going to mention is <clears throat> you can add students individually or you can type in a list of students uh, in um, a spreadsheet type program. Save it as a CSV file so you can see it says that. It said uh, create a CSV file, then you would choose a file, then you would import the students. I'm going to close that for now because I just want to add individual students right now. So I go click on add an individual student. And when I do this, I'm going to put down Jake. Uh, I just keep using K. I feel like it. Here's where I'm going to put their username. So you might want to put down student one, student two. The problem is, though, if I put down one that's already been used by me, <clears throat> it's not going to allow me to put that one in. OK, so that's an issue. So I'm going to just go and put down Mr. Uh, Mr. K. Um, G, G, and I'll put down, um, I know you know what I'm going to do. I'm going to do MK ST for student, and I'll put down one. And then for the password, uh, I'm just going to put down something like Mr. K uh, G R seven, and I'll add that student. <clears throat> And it's worked. I'm just going to save it here so that it's there. And you can see that JK is in there. You can change the password if you wish um, there. Maybe you're going to give everybody the same password. That works. And I keep doing that. If I try to do the same thing, and you can see I've got a username of MKST1. So if I create another student and I call that student to uh, Jane. I'll just put down B. You could put down the whole name if you want. And if I leave that as the same password and I go to add the student, <clears throat> it's going to tell me you can't do that. The password already exists. So that's how you would add in your students. Once you've added in your students, so I'm going to go back to my, let me go back to my classroom here somehow. Come on. Let's go back. Oh, okay. Well, maybe I'll go to my progress first then. So it, by default, it puts them into three uh, puzzle areas. The intro, which I don't normally use, then the movement, 
and the sensors. And basically all they're gonna have to do is log in with the username that you gave them and the password that you would give them. And that's all they have to do. So <clears throat> going back to all my classrooms, you can see now I have one student here and I can go and view that student. And then when I click on that student, because they haven't actually gone in and logged in, it's not gonna show anything. So you want them to, to do that, especially if someone's gonna come in and do a lesson, uh, you want them to practice that uh, with the class. So, so I want to do a little quick demo of the uh, import students. So I'm going to import students and it says it's got to be a CSV file. So I'm going to close that for just a second and open up my spreadsheet. So here's the spreadsheet that I created. There's student one as well. This is really student two. It's Helen, last name K, and that's the password. So it needs these three fields. The unfortunate part about this is that then their, um, their username is going to be some form of this. So as long as you're okay with that, and there shouldn't really be any problem with that because no one else is seeing it uh, except for you, uh, it'll work fine. So I'm going to minimize that one again. And when I go to import students, you can see right now I have two students and the username is going to be, in this case, MKST1 for Mr. Mr. K student one <clears throat> and the password is is hidden in there but um, in this particular case when I go to import students and I choose that file and it's got to be a CSV file so you when you go to save as just choose CSV it's I just created it in Excel but that's how it will work so I'm going to choose that one and I'm going to bring it in and then I'm going to import it there it is right there and you can see it imports them in. And you can see that <clears throat> what it does is it uh, formats the username as what you have it there. So at this point, um, Helen's password uh, is, is Apple's, so you can change that if you want. Um, I typically wouldn't let the kids change it because you might never be able to get back in, but that's, uh, that's how it works. So you can decide where it works best for you if you're fine with the names looking like that, that'll be fine. As I said, there's no really identifiable inf information that's being exchanged because um, the only identifiable information that people can get is, is uh, and it, it's pretty much locked down, I wouldn't worry about it too much, is your uh, email address as the teacher. So this is how to create them. This is how to do that. Once the kids uh, are ready to go, they can use that information, the username, followed by whatever pass you, you, word you've given them to log in. So if they go here, let's see, <clears throat> log out, and I try to log in again. And if I put in uh, Helen and K1, I think it was, and I think the password was Apple. If I log in with that, oh, my password is probably maybe it's oops maybe i can't spell let's try apples and there we go so we logged in with helen k1 and apples and you can see that uh helen has access to all these puzzles because uh, they've all been unlocked for her so hopefully this is helpful for you as a teacher or a mentor that wants to log in students and protect your personal information and if you do have any questions please don't hesitate to email us at first canada or me personally uh, at Paul or P. Keenan at firstinspires.org. Thanks and good luck with the first tech challenge simulator.